crisis of the third century. The crisis of the third century was a period of political and military instability in the Roman Empire that lasted from 235 to 284 AD. It was characterized by a series of short-lived and ineffective rulers, economic decline, invasions by barbarian tribes, and military coups. The empire was also plagued by internal conflicts, including civil wars and rebellions. These conflicts further weakened the empire and made it more vulnerable to external threats. The empire's borders were also under constant pressure from invaders such as the Persians in the east and the Germanic tribes in the west. The crisis began with the assassination of Emperor Alexander Severus in 235, which marked the start of a period of nearly 50 years of near-constant political upheaval and civil war. During this time, the empire was ruled by a succession of short-lived and ineffective rulers, many of whom were the victims of military coups or assassinations. This political instability led to a decline in the empire's power and prestige, as well as a loss of control over its territories. Emperor Alexander Severus was the Roman emperor from 222 to 235. He was born in 208 to Gessius Martianus and Julia of Vitamamia, and was the last emperor of the Severan dynasty. Alexander was only 13 years old when he became emperor, and his mother, Julia of Vitamamia, acted as his regent and advisor during his reign. Alexander Severus was known for his tolerance and philanthropy. He was a patron of the arts and sciences and encouraged the spread of Greek culture and learning throughout the empire. He was also a devotee of the god Elagabalus and his reign saw resurgence of the god's cult. He also tried to reconcile the different religious factions in the empire by promoting religious tolerance and allowing freedom of worship. During his reign, he tried to reform the empire's government and administration. He tried to curb the power of the Praetorian Guard and the Senate, and instead rallied on his own trusted advisors. He also tried to improve the empire's finances by reducing government spending and increasing taxes. Despite his efforts to stabilize the empire, Alexander faced several challenges during his reign. The empire was under constant threat from barbarian invasions and there were several revolts and uprisings in the provinces. In 235, Alexander Severus was assassinated by his own troops while campaigning against the Germanic tribes in the Rhineland. Germanic tribes, such as the Goths, Vandals and Visigoths, attacked the Roman Empire for economic and military reasons, as the Roman Empire was prosperous and had a complex economy. The Germanic tribes could raid and plunder Roman cities, towns and villages to gain access to wealth and resources. The Germanic tribes lived in relatively small communities, and as their population grew, they needed more land and resources to support themselves. Attacking the Roman Empire offered them the opportunity to gain control of fertile land and valuable resources. Additionally, Rome was losing its military power and the Germanic tribes saw an opportunity to take advantage of the empire's weakened state. They may have also perceived the Romans as a military threat and felt the need to attack them in order to defend their own territories. One of the major causes of the crisis was the decline in the empire's economy. The Roman government debased its currency by continually increasing the amount of base metals in coins, which led to inflation and a decline in the value of money. This made it harder for people to afford basic goods and services and led to a fall in the standard of living. The Roman economy was heavily dependent on trade, but over time the empire's ability to maintain its trade networks was hindered by invasions, piracy and internal conflicts. This led to a decline in trade and a fall in the empire's wealth. The Roman government rallied heavily on taxation to fund its expenses, including military campaigns and public works. The taxes imposed on the population were often high and regressive, and led to a decline in economic activity 
As people had less disposable income, the Roman economy was based on agriculture, but the empire's expansion led to the conversion of fertile land into pasture and the overuse of land, which led to soil erosion and a decline in agricultural productivity. Slavery was an important part of the Roman economy, but as the slave population grew, the cost of maintaining and feeding them became increasingly high. This led to a decline in the profitability of slavery and a fall in the economy. In summary, the ancient Roman economy collapsed as a result of a combination of factors, including inflation, heavy taxation, decline in trade, fall in agricultural productivity, the cost of slavery, and government overspending. The crisis was resolved when Emperor Diocletian established a more stable system of government and reorganized the empire's military and administrative structure. He divided the empire into smaller administrative units, created a new system of taxation, and reorganized the empire's army. He also appointed a co-emperor, or Augustus, to share the burden of ruling the empire. His reforms helped stabilize the empire and laid the foundation for the Byzantine Empire. Diocletian's rule is criticized for being authoritarian and oppressive. He implemented a number of measures aimed at strengthening the power of the state, such as a strict system of price controls and a law requiring people to stay in the occupation they were born into. He also launched a persecution of Christians, which is considered one of the most severe in Roman history. The crisis ultimately led to the division of the empire into a western and eastern half, each with its own emperor. The western half of the empire was further weakened by barbarian invasions and was eventually overrun by the barbarian tribes, leading to the collapse of the western Roman empire.